Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about TypeScript generic components and generics in TypeScript in general. So generics allow for reusable type safety and a good way to show um, where we will actually need this is in this little app I created. You can find the source code in the description as always. Um, so let's have a quick run through uh, the code. So right here we have an app component where it defines uh, a user's variable, which is an array of user objects, which every object containing an ID, name, and age property. And then it returns the data grid component where it passes then the users as an items property. And then we go to the data grid component. And right there you see it takes the items and then it renders an unordered list within there um, for each um, item, a JSON.stringified item, right? So that's what you're seeing right here, which is essentially the whole uh, user object. So that's what it's doing. And as you can see right here, I said, do not use any, right? And I haven't introduced any to you yet, but this essentially allows us to uh, escape TypeScript and pretty much write JavaScript without having to define the types. And while that might um, seem very convenient, you know, that takes away the whole, you know, idea of TypeScript where we make sure that everything is um, type safe. So when I now hover over item, you will see item is any, and that could essentially, that essentially means that it could be anything, right? It could be, um, well, it could be like this, an user object with ID, name, and age, but it could also be just a number or whatsoever. So you never want to use any. So let's remove any actually. And by in order to do that, I will make a type for the users, okay? So um, I could say interface, or actually I want to export that interface and I'll call it user. And we will just define the properties that are on the user object. So we have an ID, which is a number. And then we have a name, which is a string. And then we have age, which is a number as well. And then now here we could say that users is a user array. And since we exported it, we can now go right here and say that items is actually a user array. And we have to import user from our app component. And now you will see that everything works. But when I now hover over item, you will see um, that it's actually a user. But now let's imagine that we want that data grid component to be um, a generic component, right? So it's, uh, we can render users, but we could, for example, also render products or orders. So let's actually do that. So I will grab some data from here. Um, so let's create a new um, variable called orders, which has an array of orders, right? And every order contains an order ID, a quantity, and an amount, right? So these are all numbers. So now if I want to use that, uh, I'll just add a break line in here. So now when I want to use that data grid component with the orders, we could say, well, let's um, pass the orders as the item property. You will see we get an error because it says type order ID quantity amount is missing the following properties from user, right? Because the data grid component is expecting to receive um, an items property that has the same fields defined as we created right here, right? So the ID, the name, and the age. So now what we could do is we could make like another um, interface, for example, uh, order. And then right here in the data grid component, we could say items is either a user array or it's a order array, right? Something like that. But now let's imagine that we have, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, even more um, different kind of items we uh, we need, right? Because we, we use the data grid in many different places in our application, then this would become a problem. So in order to prevent this problem from happening, we can use so-called generic types. And let's actually use that um, so what I can say, 
I'll just remove this. And I will say items is a T, so a type, right? That's our generic, a T array. And then right here in data grid, I also want to say that data grid takes in a type. And we want to put the type right here as well. And now you'll see when I hover over this, it will say type data grid props is not generic. And that's because we need to press the generic type here as well. There we go. So we can actually remove this. And now I can save it. And I can actually also remove the user interface. Like that. Remove this as well. And now you'll see that whenever I save it and go back to my app, things are still working, right? Or still working, things will work because now the orders are showing up as well. Now, if I open up my console and I give the app a quick refresh, you will see it gives us a warning. It says each child in a list should have a unique key prop. And if you have been watching my previous videos, you know uh, why that is. Uh, so let's uh, actually solve that problem by saying that the list um, element should have a key and take in the item dot ID. But now you will see that it says property ID does not exist in type T. And that's where actually the next thing comes in and that's what's called generic constraint. So if we have some knowledge about the type or we want to say um, we want our generic type to at least have a certain amount of properties or in this case just one property, we can use generic constraints. And the way we could do this is we could actually make a new interface for uh, the item, right? And we want to say that it always has an ID, which is a number, like so. And now I can use that item by going right here, so just after the data grid, and I will say T extends item. And now you'll see whenever I save it, our app will crash. And the reason for that is that it now says property ID is missing in type order ID, quantity and amount, right? And that's correct because we have order ID instead of ID. But this is a nice way of ensuring that type safety is working throughout our application also when using generic components. So in order to make this work, we actually have to change the order ID to ID. And now you'll see whenever I change it, everything will work. And we also do not have the warning popping up anymore because we passed a key to the list element. So um, there's definitely more you can learn about React generic components, but this will you know, do fine for probably 90% of the cases you have to use it. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.